Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. I'm with the Embroidery Nerd and today we're looking at Chroma Inspire. We're going to go over our window, everything that we see here on the screen, as well as the buttons and the toolbars. So we'll start off right here up at the top left corner. We have our new document. You click on that, it adds a new document and it sets it to the right of your old document. So basically the more new documents you open, the more files you have open. You can tab between them as you move along. Next we have our open button. When we open we can navigate to a place that we have a file saved um, and we can basically open up our files uh, to be able to edit them. After that we have save. We can save our documents. There are two formats. Well there's more than two formats that you can save them in. The first format that you should always save in Recoma is the .rde. The .rde file is the Chroma native format. When you save in a .rde, all your settings, adjustments, and the artwork that you have in the file are all retained. Then when you're ready to stitch it out, you save the .rde, and then you can go File and Save As, and save it as a stitch file like a DST. Um, you can take it to your machine, and then when you come back to Chroma, you can open up the .rde file, you can make changes, color changes, do what you want, and re-export it as a machine file. And that way you always have the native format file. We have our print button, and in order to show you how that works, I'm going to pull a design up here on the screen. Um, we'll bring up this butterfly here, and we will go into our print preview. Our print preview shows us our design here. These lines show us the center. This is, we use this to center the design on the garment. Um, the up area rows orient which direction is up. We have here this right arrow that moves us to the next page. Our next page shows us again more information. It shows us how many stitches, how many colors, how many trims, um, and our width and our scale is 81%. And right here, one, two, three, four, is our color changes. So after we print out a DST, we would put in the color changes into the embroidery machine to be able to sew it out. We can zoom in on the files to get a little closer look. We can zoom out and we can actually print them. You can change the settings in here, which you can add a backdrop, you can take away the actual size, you can take away the crosshairs, you can make it realistic, hit OK, and then when you open back up the print window, which it opened on the wrong screen, you can see the changes that we've made has brought it down to a single page document. We can see it and we can see our color changes. I'll go ahead and close out of that. To the right of that we have send to machine. If you have um, this set up, you can send it to a machine folder, it'll export a DST file. If you have a Recoma machine, it can send it all the way over to your embroidery machine if it's networked. It's a really, really handy tool. Um, I like it a lot. We have, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete this part of the butterfly. And now that it's gone, we have our undo button. So we can undo our last mistake. And we have our redo button. So we can redo. Here we have our scale. Our scale is set. You know, we can do one to one. Um, we can do 400%. I personally like to do 600%, but it won't go to 600%. Um, I can take and draw an arrow to get where I want it, but we're not going to do that right now. We'll cover that a little later. To zoom in and out, I'm scrolling on my mouse wheel, and you can see that my mouse is that my screen is scrolling right at that little dot. If I hold down the control button it will now scroll to my mouse. So in order to change that you hold down your control button and you scroll in and out. After our scale we have our slow redraw. Our slow redraw is really handy. You can move forward stitch by stitch which takes a while. You can just hit play and it'll go through. You can drag the bar to make it go through a little faster. And bring it through and you can see the order that everything's sewing out and make sure that there's nothing kind of wonky going on in your design. To go out of that we would select our select tool. Here we have our start and stop. Um, you can show your start and stop point which is going to be right there in the center of our design. 
we can go to advanced and we can change it from first stitch to last stitch to center or bottom center. Um, I like to do bottom center when I do hats so that's really helpful to change that. Here we have our realistic view or 3D view so it gives us kind of the render of the thread. To the right of that we have our grid so we can turn on and off our grid sitting there. We have our stitch ends. If you look at all those little tiny dots that just showed up, those are all needle penetrations. So it's where the ends of the stitches are. Turn that off. This is our backdrop tool. Our backdrop tool, if we had a backdrop um, in there, a uh, picture that we were digitizing, you can click on that and it hides it. We have our commands. We can show or hide machine commands. If I click on that, you can see now I've got little red circles right there and right there and I have little pairs of scissors all over the design. The pairs of scissors are trims, circles are tie-in points, um, fairly self-explanatory with that. Go ahead and hide it. If I had a hoop set up we could click on this and it would show the hoop on the screen and I could move this um, according to the orientation on the hoop. Next up we have going down the list we have our auto digitize button. Our auto digitize button if we bring in some vector art we can click on auto digitize. Um, we can even bring in bitmap if I remember right. Yep, bitmap, you can auto digitize it. Auto digitizing works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work that well, um, but we do have that option. And I'll go over that a little bit more later on. If we select everything, we have our optimized entry and exit points. If I click on that, it's going to change where the tie-ins for new colors happen, the tie-outs for colors happen, and I can turn on the commands and you can see how they've kind of moved. Um, the reason for that is to minimize the machine head travel, um, minimize jump stitches and trims. To the right of that we have color sort, so down here in our sequence manager you can see we've already got four colors, but if we had repeating colors going on if we duplicated this I'll select it all and duplicate I'll put it over there now we have two times as many objects um, we can select it all let me get out of that tool we can select it all and we can color sort and it'll rearrange the way that these things so eventually there we go it rearranges the colors to try and optimize so that there's less um, color changes in your design. Let's go ahead and we're going to undo a couple times here to get rid of that. That's not undo. This one. Undo to get rid of that other butterfly. We'll go ahead and select it all again. This is our based box. Um, our basting box is really nice if we're doing, if we're floating. So if we're floating this design, um, we have our stabilizer down, we put some fabric down, a shirt down, then we can have the base box that goes around and holds the shirt to the stabilizer and then it'll start sewing the design. It puts it at the front over here of our object list. After our basting box, let me go ahead and select everything again. We have our duplicate, um, control D. You go ahead and select that. Now we've duplicated this object. We can't see it yet. I have to tell it where to put it. So I come over on the screen and I left click and now we have that off to the right. Um, let's go ahead and to fit. So now we have both of them in the screen. Select them all. Change to the select tool. Select them all. Um, we have our repeat. So if we're doing patches, we can tell it we want it to go three wide, three wide, three high. Um, the distance between them. Basically, you can multiply the design for your hoop so that when you take it to your machine, it can stitch out more than one. We have our carousel. This one I really enjoy. Um, if you want to make a circle, um, you can go ahead and change that in the carousel. Uh, you can set the height and the width, the repeats and the angle. Um, also under there we have the place. So we can go in a corner. We can do a neckline if we have um, some flowers that we want to do in a necklace. Along the neckline we can do that. We have reflect which is basically going to mirror it both on the X and the Y axis. And we have our scatter, which is just going to throw it kind of randomly down, depending on the size and the distance that we give up. After that, we have our flip horizontal button. 
flip that back we have our flip vertical button rotate left rotate right we can align so if we left align it's going to move everything over um, doesn't look like I had everything selected we can right align top align bottom align I mean you can see how it pulled it all apart um, it did that because let me go back the objects weren't grouped together and that's not the back button so let's try that again there we go getting close alright so if we select all of these objects here we can right click and we can group we can select all of these objects here we can right click and we can group and now when I align them let's go ahead and select them all they're not gonna break into little pieces so it's gonna select as one I can select just the top one move it bottom one it's kind of assign them all as to one large group after the align buttons we have our move to front move to back so this is for our sequencing if we select our top one here that group we can move it back and if we select the bottom one we can move it forward and that just kind of moves it around in our sewing order after our sewing order we have our group button which we've grouped already one set so if we select just one side it's grayed out we also have our ungroup button so we can ungroup all the objects by selecting that now we're going to come down the left hand side we have our select button which we've been using here to select different objects our node edit button if we click on that you can see let's scroll in a little here for you you can see the different nodes and you can see the stitch angle we can change the stitch angle we've got our start point and our stop point and we can change kind of move the nodes around now one thing to note after we make the changes here we do need to click on the select tool for them to take effect so to take that back we'll hit the undo button you can kind of see the stitch angle and the redo button you can see that it changed um, it did change its shape underneath here if I take off the 3d view you can see that um, but because this was done earlier in the sewing order than this it hit underneath it let's go ahead and kick back on 3d view now we have our zoom tool you can basically just draw a box about what you want to see on the screen so just draw a box around it and that'll bring that up we have our pan tool that allows us to move around our object as we're zoomed in we have our measure tool our measure tool we can use to measure our stitches so this one is 1.7 millimeter long stitch um, one thing to note with the tool is you do need to click and drag to measure if you just click it's not going to do anything so you got to click and drag We'll go ahead and go off of that we've got our backdrop tool we can click on that and we can bring in a backdrop um, select we have our art tool we can go here and we can draw like a triangle a star we can do a rectangle let's go ahead and draw a rectangle we can fill that rectangle let's make sure that we select the rectangle we have to select the object before we change it and we can make the changes there um, these come in handy if you want an actual rectangle you can bring up a rectangle and you can fill it with your color you can select it here let's go up one more after we select it and we can say auto digitize it and this is how we can get our perfect rectangles um, circles that's how we can draw our shapes then we can go in and we can delete the art afterwards um, I do have a run stitch around the outside I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and you can see now we have our rectangle after that we have our text tool you can type onto the screen here hello and hit apply and it should pop up right there um, let's move it up just a little bit right now we're in an area where we can adjust our kerning so we can slide the letters back a little bit bring things a little closer if we'd like to we can extend our baseline if we want Let's go ahead and go back into our select tool and bring that up there so we can see it. After that we have our monogram tool which is fairly close to the same. So if we bring our monogram tool over here and we start a monogram, um, type in three letters and hit apply. And it brings us our little monogram font there. 
we can change our fonts up here. The F's are digitized fonts. The M are specifically made monogram fonts. Um, you can hit apply and that's where we can go. You can change it to normal text too if you want to or we can go into a circle and do that as well. After that we have our run tool. We can do straight nodes as a left click. Corner nodes are a control click to get our curves. Left click again to get hard corners. When I get to the end I press enter. It wants me to pick my start point and my stop point. After that we have our satin. Our satin tool works off of point and counterpoint. So if we're digitizing a vertical column, we're going to click a left click for a corner node. We'll come over a little bit and click another corner node. I'm going to hold down shift to lock it to the axis. And I'm going to come up. I'm going to do the left side. And then I'll do the right side. The line in the middle, this one here, that's on an angle right there, that is our stitch angle. So I can bring it like this. And now the stitches are going to curve to the right. And let's go ahead and just make a little box corner here and we'll do that. I'm going to hit enter again. It's going to tell me, ask me for a start point. I can select the default one by hitting enter or clicking there. I can change the start point to over here if I want to by clicking and I'll let the end point be there. And Now you can see we have our satin stitch that comes up and turns the corner. Our last toolbar on the left is our complex fill. I'm just going to draw a little bit of a rectangle here and to close this last side I'm going to press enter. It's going to ask me for the stitch angle which I can change here and then it will be start point and stop point. I'm going to start and stop it right there and now we have our complex fill there. So that's everything on the top toolbar, this toolbar, and this toolbar. Down here we have our colors. If you left click on your colors it'll bring up the color palette you can change it to the type of thread that you like to use. Um, if you right click on a color, it's going to change the color. So if we select this object and we come down here and we right click on it, it's going to give us that color. Coming across the bottom, we have our plus arrow and our minus arrow. We can add colors. You can see the 12, 13, 14, 15. We can remove colors. It will bring us down to where we're at. We can select our color chart here again and change to different brands. This is also going to tell us all the color codes that we need. And finally we have our background color. If it's too bright here to see or you're working on different color designs, you're using a lot of white thread, you can go ahead and change the background color to something a little bit easier for your eyes to see. I'm going to change it back to white because I'm not a big fan of that yellow. And then finally we have our make current default, reset default, and that'll set your current colors to the default as well as um, your color palette. Up here on the right side as we're coming over we have our sequence window. Our sequence window is the sequence that the objects will sew out. Um, you can go ahead and cl click here to select an object. When I do select an object it highlights it over here so I can see which object it is and where it's at in the run sequence. We can go here to design. This is where I got the butterfly from. Um, Chroma has some built-in de designs and here they are. They're .rde files which is important because they're the object files so we can make changes to them. Um, to bring one of those you can double click on it and it will open it in a new file. And if I wanted to move it into the other file I can select it all using control A. I can copy it using control C and I can paste it using control V. And now we have it in here. Um, if we go here, this is our window. So we can pan around our window here to see all the different objects. We do have some stitch specific windows that come up. If we select a run stitch here, you can see I have my stitch length is 3. I'm going to change that to 3.5 millimeters and I'm going to hit apply and it's going to lengthen out those stitches. The I can set it as a two ply stitch or a bean stitch here as well. Um, I do have commands. I can tell it how to start, how to stop. Um, these are very helpful if you want to do a jump, jump step or stitch or a frame out. 
slow down the machine if you need to. We have our tie-ins and tie-offs here uh, and we also have our trims. So if you wanted to trim after a specific object you can set it right there. Here we have our transform window. I've got my height and my width, the scale, my maintain aspect ratio, and my position on the screen. So if I wanted to bring that into the middle, I'd zero out these two val values, and now it's over here in the middle. Let's bring it back up here so we can see it, though. Our next stitch type that we're going to do is satin. You can see here we've got our standard fill. We've got satin. We can move it to, to a tatami fill. It's going to flatten everything out and put in a bunch of stitches. Most of the times with letters you're going to want to do a satin. Looks nicer. Over here we have our different underlays and we'll be going into all the different underlays and when to use them in uh, future videos. Um, here we have our pull, pull comp. Again we'll go over that in future videos. We have our commands, the tie-ins, tie-offs that we can set, and our scale. Now if we select our final stitch type, we have the fill. We can select different patterns to get different effects. So if we hit apply here, you're going to see that we just changed the effect on that stitch type. We have our stitch length here, our density, our underlay, pull comp, commands, and transfer. When you do do designs, you need to make sure that if you change something over here in this window, like we'll change this back to tatami, that we hit apply. And apply locks in the change for you there. So I hope this helps you guys understand your workspace here uh, for Chroma Inspire. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And I look forward to doing more videos for you. This is Jeff, and I'm with The Embroidery Nerd.